Hello, and welcome to Interior Health's Adult Type 2 Diabetes video series. My name is Jackie, and I am a registered dietitian and diabetes educator. This video is about carbohydrate counting and label reading. Just a few reminders as you watch this video series. We encourage you to watch the videos in order. And just remember, you can go back and watch the videos as often as you'd like. Fraser Health On the Road to Diabetes Health is a great resource to accompany this video series. And remember, you can pause the video at any time if you would like to spend a little bit more time reviewing the information. We would like to acknowledge that our work occurs on the beautiful, traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the First Nations of the Interior Region. We also recognize the Métis Nation and the contributions of the Métis peoples to the Indigenous ways of being and knowing on this land. We're going to review some of the nutrition basics today, then talk about what is a carbohydrate choice, review what that means in carbohydrate counting, we're going to learn how to read labels for carbohydrates, and then we'll finish up with some snack ideas. In video four, we discussed some of the basics of nutrition and how it relates to diabetes, what the role of fiber is in our diet, how some of our foods affect our blood sugars, and how to use some simple tools to consider our portions and planning our meals. In this video, we are going to build on our lesson of how to watch our portions of carbohydrates and discuss snacks. In the last video, we also discussed how to use the plate method or the handy portion method for balancing your meals. If you have diabetes, you're sure to hear a lot about carbohydrate counting or carb counting. This is another tool we use for choosing portions of carbohydrates. But just in case you're still figuring out what it all means, let's quickly review the basics. What are carbohydrates and how do they affect your body when you have diabetes? Here's what's going on inside your body. When you eat something that has carbs in it, your body turns that into a type of sugar called glucose. Insulin from your pancreas acts as a key to let the glucose leave the blood and move into other cells throughout the body where it's used for energy. But with diabetes, your body either doesn't make insulin or it doesn't make enough insulin or your body has trouble using the insulin it does make. Without the help of insulin, the glucose stays in the blood. And when this happens, it's called high blood sugar. It is important to keep the amount of carbs in mind when choosing meals. Of all the foods you eat, foods that have carbs cause your blood sugar to rise the most, and that makes more work for you and your body to lower your blood sugar. Now, when it comes time to actually counting carbs, you may want to talk to your diabetes educator or dietitian to help you make a plan. You can find the number of carbs in packaged foods by reading food labels or by looking in the On the Road to Diabetes Health booklet for some examples of fresh foods. Let's have a closer look. Let's look at this chart or table of foods that are all carbohydrate containing foods. They are separated into four categories, grains and starches, fruit, milk and dairy alternatives, and sweet foods. Remember, if you would like to spend longer looking at this chart, you can pause the video or find the same table in the On the Road to Diabetes Health, the resource we recommend to accompany this video series. Each item in this chart is approximately 15 grams of carbohydrate. For example, one slice of bread is approximately 15 grams of carbohydrate and one cup of blueberries is also approximately 15 grams of carbohydrate. Most people need about 30 to 45 grams of carbohydrate per meal. So if each item in this chart is approximately 15 grams, you can build your meals to come up with the 30 to 45 grams. 
Remember, this is only counting the carbohydrates on your plate. It does not include the rest of your balanced meal we discussed using the plate method, which includes protein foods and vegetables. Let's have a look at an example of counting carbs on the next page. In the booklet of On the Road to Diabetes Health, there are some sample menus for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This is one of the sample breakfasts. Let's practice our counting how many carbs are in this meal. Using the chart we just looked at, let's count the carbs. How many carbs are in one orange? 15 grams. How about one slice of toast? Another 15 grams. One egg? That's a trick question. This is a protein. So we are going to say that this is zero carbs. How about coffee? If it is plain coffee, no carbs either. Unless you are adding sugar or another sweetener, each teaspoon of sugar is adding another four grams of carbohydrate. But let's say that we're drinking it black. So 15 plus 15 would be 30 grams of carbs in this meal. If you added another slice of toast, it would be adding another 15 grams of carb for a total of 45 grams. Let's try another example from the sample menu. Two slices of bread is 30 grams. Two ounces of fish, no carbs as this is a protein food. How about two teaspoons of mayo? Again, no carb as this is an added fat. Tomato and lettuce, no carb. Salad with dressing, no carb. These are more vegetables. What about one apple? That would be about 15 grams of carb. So the only carbs we are counting are from the bread and the fruit, and this adds up to 45 grams of carb. This meal is well balanced with protein and vegetables. You can pause this video and go and find a package of food in your kitchen that has a food label on it. If you have a box of cereal, a loaf of bread, some crackers or a granola bar, it'll be a useful tool. So go ahead and press pause. Great. Now, what do you think I might tell you is the most important thing to look at on a nutrition facts table? I'll bet you didn't guess my answer. It's the serving size. If you're going to be looking at counting carbs, it is very important that you are either eating that serving size or doing some math. If you have a loaf of bread, does it refer to a serving size of one slice or two? Well, how much will you be eating? If you are looking at a box of cereal, is the serving size one cup or three quarters of a cup? How much do you usually pour into your bowl? The example I'm showing you here is for a box of crackers. It says for four crackers. Am I eating this many crackers? Then go ahead and look at the grams of carbohydrate. Do you see how underneath the word carbohydrate are the words sugar and fiber? Sugar and fiber make up part of the carbohydrate. Remember how in the first video, we were reviewing the importance of choosing high fiber carbohydrates? Well, when you're looking at a food label, you get to subtract the fiber from the carbohydrates. The number you are left with is sometimes called the available carb or the net carb. This is the number you will use when you are carb counting. For four of these crackers, it is 13 grams of carbohydrate minus two grams of fiber. So I will count this as 11 grams of carbohydrate in total. The sugar amount found on a food label can be quite confusing. Remember that carbohydrates are made up of starches, fiber, and sugar. Sugars are found in many foods, including fruit, vegetables, and milk. Sugars are also found in high amounts in fruit juice, honey, and syrups. 
and sugars are often added to many foods during processing or preparation in order to add taste, texture, or color. They can also be used to preserve foods, such as fruit jams and jellies. While it's important to look at the sugar content on a nutrition facts table, if the number seems high, look at the ingredient list as well. The more added sugars to your food, the higher the carbohydrate amount will be. Here is an example of a plain Greek yogurt on the left compared to a vanilla Greek yogurt on the right. First, we compare the serving sizes. They are the same, three quarters of a cup. If you look at the carbohydrates of the plain Greek yogurt, you'll notice that there is seven grams of carbohydrate and five grams of sugar. The ingredient list would tell us there are no added sugars. Compare this to the vanilla Greek yogurt. There is 19 grams of carbohydrate and 18 grams of sugar. If you were to look at the ingredient list, you will see that there is added sugars to the yogurt. So while it is important to look at the sugar content on a nutrition facts table, if the number seems high, look at the ingredient list as well. The more added sugars to your food, the higher the carbohydrate amount will be and the higher your blood sugars may be after eating it. Now that we understand how to read food labels to know how many carbs are in our foods, Let's finish off by talking about snacks. Snacks may be helpful if you find that your meals are spaced more than four to six hours apart. They may also be helpful if you are a very active person and you need more fuel to give you the energy you need. Snacks can also help us to manage our hunger so that when we sit down to a meal, it is easier for us to follow the portion sizes that are right for us and our blood sugars. If you snack, we generally recommend keeping it to 15 grams of carbs. If you are hungry for more, or if you want the snack to last for a longer time, you can pair it with some protein or non-starchy vegetables. In the On the Road to Diabetes Health booklet, there is a page that lists several snack ideas. Like most new things, Carb counting and label reading may seem hard at first, but it's going to be okay. You can do this. Thank you for watching the carbohydrate counting and label reading video. We encourage you to view the remaining videos for more information about living well with type 2 diabetes.